What's going on everybody? Merry Christmas once again. It has officially been one whole year since I got this trailer and dumpsters. Now obviously this is going to look a little different than it did last year. I have a 20 yard dumpster here instead of a 15 yarder and that trailer is way more scuffed up and way more dirty and you name it it's been through it at this point. So we are going to do the one year review of the Texas Pride 18K debraided to 16K trailer. And we will show you what we do and don't like. All the stuff that I have uh, had some problems with, all the stuff that's been great, and hopefully give you a good understanding of what you're dealing with moving into the future. Are you considering purchasing a Texas Pride trailer? I'm gonna score them in 10 different categories and give them an overall score at the end. But make sure you watch everything because there's a bit of nuance involved that's important before you understand the whole picture. Also, make sure you stick around to the end. I'll tell you a few things I'd change and I have a couple key upgrades to make your life easier if you're gonna be operating a trailer like mine. From the initial order to a year of operation and everything in between, this has been my experience with one year of owning a Texas Pride Reaving Roll-Off trailer. Part 1. The Order Ordering a trailer with Texas Pride is easy. They have a ton of information on their website to make your decision simple. You can browse through the different categories and even chat with someone via their online chat service. I did a ton of research before I ever placed my order, so for me, I simply emailed back and forth with a salesperson, finalized a build sheet, and placed a deposit with them. Completing an online order was easy, so I'll give them a 9 out of 10. Part 2. Setting and Meeting Expectations In November of 2022, they quoted me a 2-3 to three week build time for my trailer and 6 dumpsters. After about 5 weeks, I received an email from my salesperson saying the trailer was ready. I immediately set my travel arrangements and informed him that I would be arriving the following Tuesday. He then replied that the dumpsters were not finished, but after a few emails back and forth, he assured me they'd get them completed in time. Upon arrival, they told me that they noticed the trailer was in need of some adjustments due to a missing metal reinforcement plate and other more cosmetic issues that were not up to the standards of the brand, which meant they needed to strip some paint, do some metal work, and I wouldn't be able to take delivery at that time. They did agree to ship the completed order to me the following week and said I should arrange the offloading for the following Thursday. After making all the arrangements on my end, I had to call that Tuesday afternoon to find out that the trailer hadn't even been repainted at this point and they would fail to deliver it to me once again. I was informed they were awaiting a shipment of the neon green paint I had requested and they were unsure if they'd complete it before they shut down for a two week winter holiday. Thankfully, they did manage to push the process through on their final day of operation and finally managed to get me my order on Christmas Eve. I'll cut them a bit of slack because this was the end of the year and I'm sure the holidays make things difficult to complete on time. With that said though, this is one category they filled in pretty miserably. I'm a very understanding individual and wasn't rushing them at any point of the process. For setting and meeting expectations, I unfortunately have to give them a four out of 10. Part three, price and bang for the buck. If you want a standard rail roll off trailer, there are only a few options available to you. If you want a standard rail reeving system trailer, there are even less options available to you. With prices ranging from about $25,000 to $45,000, most of them were out of reach for my budget at the time I purchased my trailer. Including a couple upgrades to my order, I ended up paying roughly $28,000 for a standard rail reeving system trailer with pony motor, which is significantly less than its competitors at the time. Currently, it's still the least expensive option for a reeving system I'm aware of, but the competition is getting much more stiff going into 2024. For price, I'll give them a 9 out of 10. I don't think it could be more effective than it is for a lower price and still keep them in business. Part 4. Taking Delivery as I briefly touched on in the meeting expectations category, I drove all the way to Texas to pick up my trailer, but was unable to do so. I did get an opportunity to see their facility a bit and to watch others receive a proper delivery before leaving. So my experience will be a bit different than someone who received the unit in person. Ultimately, my setup came on the back of a flatbed semi-truck, and other than the phone calls and YouTube, I was kind of on my own to learn the ropes. For delivery, I'll give them a five out of 10. 
The attempted pickup was a real disappointment and the shipment process kind of leaves you on your own. If there was a better established video delivery process with user manual style videos, I think it would be much better. With that said, my setup arrived all in good shape and there were no issues with the transportation side of receiving everything. For parts five and six, we're gonna talk about the trailer build quality as well as the attention to detail. For build quality and attention to detail, I'm gonna break this into two parts. This is a bit of a tough one for me to answer perfectly. On one hand, the trailer is holding up great, all the metal is welded together nicely, and nothing structural has broken or given me any kind of issue. On the other hand, there were a lot of cosmetic issues, as well as some minor issues that I had to take care of after accepting the order. As I mentioned before, they had painted the trailer, then had to go back and fix some metal work after it was completed. Some of my issues, I believe, have come from the disassembly and reassembly portion of the build, so hopefully my experience was a one-off. A majority of my Zerk fittings were missing, broken, or painted over upon delivery. Both trailer storage bin locks were painted over. The Texas Pride sticker on the gooseneck was not removed and replaced properly for the second coat, so the paint, or possibly the delivery prep team, appears to have cut around the outline to make it work. Now that I've removed the sticker, there's a clear paint layer difference between the new coat and where the sticker was. My tarp motor system had to be replaced due to a short power cable being run from the power bank to the tarp motor. My hydraulic lines blew out where they attached to the motor, which in my opinion was due to the way they were managed during the disassembly and reassembly phase. My motor system was drilled and mounted about four inches off from its proper location. And finally, my spare tire was never mounted properly on the wheel, so I had to get the bead set and inflated by myself. Build quality was a much tougher category for me to score, because everything that's important was built well. All the issues I've had were mainly cosmetic or minor issues. I could easily give this a low score due to the numerous little things, but considering how well it operates on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 for build quality and five out of 10 for attention to detail. Part seven, trailer design and layout. The design and layout of a trailer can make a big difference for people depending on their wants and needs. If it's a winch run system, it would be less important, but when you go into a reeving system, you'll have to run and maintain a gas motor. For some builders, this would be located between the jacks below the gooseneck, but for Texas Pride, they have chosen to run it up above the neck. It's likely due to ease of install, but that's not done to give the ultimate user experience. You'll need to refuel your system on a regular basis. How comfortable are you with climbing up into the bed of your truck multiple times a week? Does the idea of leaning over a gooseneck, avoiding the exhaust system, and pouring gasoline into the tank sound like more of a hassle than you'd like to deal with? That's something to consider. Some of the choices when it comes to placement of how things are run from one location to another appear to be done for cost over convenience reasons. That's not totally a bad thing considering they deliver at a much lower price point than their competitors, but I do believe it's a process they could refine and improve over time to give a better user experience. For design and layout, I'm gonna give them a seven out of 10. I think it would be unfair to rate them lower considering the price difference between the manufacturers. And while I do think things could improve, I'm happy to see the large break in savings from the methods they choose to use. Part eight, build, price, and quality of dumpsters. Let me start by saying that I think all the dumpsters are good. Just good, not great, not crappy, just good. I do have some minor issues with the double doors on one of the dumpsters, but that's partially to do with the design and partially to do with the specific job I put it on. I had placed it on a job where one roller was on hard ground and the other wasn't, which slightly tweaked the can and now the door needs to be lifted while it's closed. If you're looking to do heavy duty work such as concrete, then stay away. But for residential and remodel or light construction work, they can be a fine solution. The problem I have with their dumpsters is mainly the build quality versus price ratio. When it comes to trailers, there's not nearly as much competition, but with dumpsters, that's not the case. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands of metal fabrication shops across the country that could build you a higher quality dumpster for a lower price. If the Texas Pride dumpsters were less expensive than those shops, I would say they may be a good purchase, but the problem is that they're actually more expensive. Before you purchase any dumpsters from them, I'd recommend you explore your options for dumpster manufacturers. For the quality of dumpster, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Part nine, the capabilities. The trailer I purchased has two 9,000 pound axles, making it an 18K rated trailer by default. It's got a total weight of roughly 6,500 pounds and the dumpsters weigh somewhere between 2,500 and 3,500 pounds, depending on the size. 
That leaves us with somewhere around five tons of capacity from a manufacturer standpoint. I've seen these things put through the stress test plenty of times and they have performed every time. I've seen other people use them to pick up weights double what they're rated for and they still go on performing. The reeving system picks up a five ton load with the same ease that it picks up an empty dumpster. Overall, I am very confident that it'll pick up anything you throw at it if you're using good judgment and reason for your loads. From a capability standpoint, I will give it a 10 out of 10. I don't even begin to question its capabilities while using it for weights within or slightly exceeding its specific guidelines. Part 10, standing behind your product. I spent the last decade before dumpsters in the automotive industry. I worked for many different brands and auto groups, so I was exposed to many different levels of after purchase treatment. We all want things to be perfect when we spend that kind of money on them, but we also have to realize that stuff happens and it's important to understand that almost nothing will be perfect. After the purchase, you wanna know that the brand or manufacturer is gonna take care of the problems that arise. If I had to give Texas Pride one category that they have absolutely knocked it out of the park in, this is it. I told them about painted over Zerk fittings and trouble with some paint. They sent me a bundle of Zerks and some touch up. I expressed concerns about the tarp system motor and cable. They sent me a whole new tarp motor and wiring assembly. I told them my hydraulic lines blew out on me. They told me to get it fixed and they cut me a reimbursement check the following day and overnighted it. I'm gonna give them a 10 out of 10 in this category. They've either sent me parts or money for every issue I've ever expressed to them. They've even sent me a few extras to compensate for my frustrations. I got a solar panel at no charge, as well as some clear wheel hub covers. I'd love to say I didn't have any problems with it, but if I was gonna have some troubles, I'm grateful it was with a company that would stand behind their product and make sure I was taken care of with as little inconvenience as possible. Overall, we're gonna give them a 7.1 out of 10. Here's the part I want everyone to pay close attention to. I think Texas Pride makes a great product for a great price. Considering the options out there at the time, I don't think I could have purchased a better trailer for the money. Even today, going into 2024, there's very little competition from a quality to cost standpoint, although I am seeing a few more interesting options out there. If I had to go back in time and make the decision over again, I'd still happily give them the opportunity to earn my business, but I would be much more on top of their quality control process and make sure things were done correctly from the start. Having a hydraulic line bust may just be a case of bad luck, but things like the pain issues on the neck, for example, fall solely on the shoulders of the people building and inspecting the trailer before delivery. I'm very happy with its performance so far a year into it. Having seen virtually all the more expensive options out there now, I don't believe that spending 20,000 extra dollars would have improved the ability for me to make the kind of money that justifies the difference. There may be a difference between them at the five, 10, or even 20 year mark, but honestly, I don't think many people are buying a roll off trailer to operate primarily for 20 years. I personally bought this trailer to run it hard for a few years and then transition it to a dedicated truck and use it as a backup beyond that. And from what I can tell, this is gonna satisfy my needs for as long as I need it to, assuming I take care of it. Now for things I'd change. The tabs on the sides of the dumpsters are there for stacking reasons. I wouldn't go as far as to say that they shouldn't do it, but I will say from a consumer standpoint, they should instruct you to cut them off immediately. So this is me saying, cut those stupid things off your dumpsters. The tarp arms are kind of cheap. They work fine, but they bend easy. I saw some from US tarps when I was at the Lone Star Showcase that were more rectangular and way stronger looking. Once you cut the tabs off, it shouldn't be much of an issue, but it would still be nice if they used the stronger of the two options. The marker lights are fine, but I think they should have put them on a bit of an angle at the front of the toolbox. You can still see them as you take turns, but it would be nice to have them more visible from the driver's seat. It would be nice to have the option for rear metal tabs, similar to a hook lift truck and dumpsters. The straps are fine, but the metal tabs would be much more convenient and you wouldn't have to worry about them dragging or falling off on the side of the road. I think they should have added a shock system or at least a foam liner for the storage bins. They slam down hard when you close them and it can be very loud. Now before you go, let me quickly show you a couple key upgrades for those of you who are considering getting a trailer like mine. I personally think these should be added on day one if you go this route. For one, a shocker hitch or something similar. Trust me, your back will thank me later. Two, a solar panel to charge the engine starter battery will make your life so much nicer. You can leave your wireless system on and it will maintain your small battery without an issue. Three, a Roto Pax fuel can and fuel can mount. 
It attaches easily to the gooseneck plate here and will make storing and transporting backup fuel much safer and easier. Good luck out there with your decision, and I hope everyone out there crushes their goals in the new year. Stay hungry.